Hello and welcome to the Photo Bar, the podcast talking all about the business and lifestyle photography while drinking beer. This is episode number 15, How to Find Your Photography Niche and Should You? Hey guys, my name is Matt Druin and my goal is to help you become a better person, a better photographer, and a better entrepreneur. In today's episode, we're going to dive into finding your photography niche, should you, how, and why. So grab a beer, a coffee, or whatever drink that you would like, pull up a seat, and join the conversation. This episode is also going to be a solo episode as our photography businesses are starting to get busier. Um, It's getting a little bit more difficult to schedule everything, but... I want to keep bringing you guys content, so some episodes are going to be solo, some will be you know, with Amanda or other guests, but either way, I want to keep putting something out for you, um, and I'm also not having a beer today, actually. I'm actually drinking a salted caramel latte that I just made, only because it's about 6.30 in the morning, and a beer that early just seemed a little too much for me, so yeah, I'm drinking a salted caramel latte right now. So let's jump into finding your photography niche. I've been having some conversations with other people about this, you know, finding a photography niche and also finding your photography style. And I thought it would be a great topic to talk about because I think a lot of people struggle with these two things. Um, I think finding your photography niche and style are always big conversations that people usually have. And I always see usually, you know, more advanced photographers telling younger photographers that you have to find a niche, you have to find your style. And I would agree with that for the most part, for sure. And to me, finding your photography style and niche are kind of similar, but they're also different. So today, we're just really going to focus on the photography niche aspect of it. And in a later episode, I'll probably do one on you know finding your photography style. When we first start out as photographers, we tend to shoot pretty much anything and everything, and we we all benefit from that because you know we're learning the fundamentals of things like ISO and shutter speed you know, aperture, just kind of how to use the camera, finding light, and all those great things that we all need to know as a foundation to being a photographer. But much like doctors or chefs or, you know, other people, we often break out into different specialties or niches. And photographers also tend to kind of do the same thing. We, We break out into photography niches and what our passions are when it comes to shooting. You know, some photographers find that they love newborns but hate weddings. And then other people like myself are totally opposite, where I love weddings. And I'm not so interested in newborns, you know, especially with those cute little poses and the hats and things like that. It's, it's just not me as a person, and it's not something I enjoy photographing. And other people, you know, they love landscapes, but they hate to shoot people. And then some photographers like to work in a studio and... Other ones like to work outdoors, some with natural light, some with mixed light, off-camera lighting, or whatever the case may be. Everybody has kind of a different um, approach and style and, and niche that they go into with photography. Regardless, the most important thing I feel is that you should always be shooting what you love, and that should be the number one important thing. Um, regardless whether it's just a hobby or photography is going to be an income stream or currently is an income stream, if you don't love what you're doing, then you're just kind of doing it wrong. You know, if you are doing something just for the money aspect of it, eventually it's going to start to suck because it just seems like work. I mean, obviously, photography itself can be a job. It can be a career. It is work. But when you love it, that feeling of sucking and it feeling like work just isn't there. Plus, it'll get boring and you'll burn out fast before moving on. There's a lot of things that you can do in the world and in, in life that sucks, you know, and sometimes we just have to deal with that. But I don't feel photography should be one of them. If you plan to make income in, from photography in some way, um, the niche that we choose could have a direct impact on how easily it is to break into and make money from that niche. Um, certain niches are, in general, harder to break into and make money from, like maybe a wildlife photographer or a landscape photographer, for example. I don't know a ton about making money in those specific areas, but my guess is there's not a lot of people calling and looking for like a wildlife photographer or a landscape photographer to do certain jobs um, like there would be, say, with weddings or portraits. I'd imagine in those areas, you know, shooting maybe editorial type assignments or commercial work, um, doing exhibitions, selling fine art and things like that would be the way most people would make money in that area. 
And all of those things are generally harder to make money from in comparison you know, to the retail side of photography, like weddings and portraits. And then sometimes money, or lack thereof, can cause us to continue shooting anything and everything just to make money, especially if we're not doing well on the business side of things, or maybe we have a ton of debt in our personal life or our business, and we're struggling to make money in that niche to keep paying those bills. And if you get the business part and the money part planned out well, it just makes everything easier to niche and specialize in something and then make more money in that area, which is a good thing. That's what we're looking for, especially if we're doing it as a business. It's also totally okay to niche in a certain area like, say, weddings, but also take jobs doing something else like newborns or product photography or something else. Um, from a marketing perspective, you might have to have, let's like, say, a different brand for each one of those things and different websites and different SEO and all that sort of stuff. But that's kind of a whole different episode, and I'm not going to jump into that too much. But for example, like my niches or specialties are weddings, portraits, and families. And in general, my niches focus on people and the storytelling of people's lives. But I also do like to do some product photography from time to time especially in the winter months when things are a lot slower for me. I, I work with a couple of companies that I've been dealing with for a few years, and I do some of their product photography for catalog and website stuff. And that's just something I enjoy doing. It's a lot different from what I normally do as far as weddings and portraits go. And I, I just find it, you know, fun and relaxing and just a change of pace, I guess. And then when it comes to my main work, I also I kind of niche inside of a niche, I guess it would be. For example, I... I'm very selective on the types of family photos that I do and how I approach them. I don't particularly care for the traditional style of like the posed family portraits with the white shirts on the beach or in the park or whatever. And instead, I like to focus on the storytelling of the family in a more documentary fashion. The posed traditional style just doesn't excite me, you know? It's not the way that I choose to do them. So it's almost kind of like I'm niching instead of the niche of family photography. And if someone were to contact me to do, say, traditional pose portraits in the park, I would suggest that they find another photographer and maybe refer them to other photographers that do that type of work. It might seem silly or dumb to pass up on work, you know, since it's coming to me, but it really just doesn't interest me and excite me in the same way that doing a family documentary would. So I'm not going to have the same passion as someone who specializes in a more traditional way, and that's their style, and that's, that's what they're really good at. Therefore, they're more likely to do a better job in serving that client. And at the end of the day, that's, that's it. That's the most important thing. For me to refer somebody, that potential client is going to remember that just because, you know, I didn't just take the job. I, I was truly passionate and, and cared about them and the experience that they were going to have versus just taking their money. And when it comes to maybe they one day want to do a family documentary or they know that I do weddings or whatever it might be, they're going to come back to me just for that reason. Now, that may not always happen that way, but there's a pretty good chance that it will, and it has happened before to where I've had people, you know, send me an inquiry for something that I just didn't do or I wasn't, it wasn't my thing, I wasn't good at it, so I sent them to somebody else, but later they did come back to me, you know, to, to photograph their wedding. Um, I've had that a couple times. So I feel that that's a good way of approaching it personally. When it comes to actually making money um, with photography, I feel kind of going back to the, the first thing we talked about of, of loving what you do um, will tremendously help you out because you're more driven to continuously keep learning in that area. Um, we're going to be getting better in that area all the time. We wake up and we're excited about those types of jobs. And you know, our heart and our soul are really just into that. And eventually that's going to allow us to be able to, to be known as you know, a specialist in that area, that's our thing, and therefore we can charge more money for that because we are so good at that one thing. If we're doing photography as a business, another thing that might affect what our niche is would be how we want to run our business. Maybe we have kids or we really value our weekends, therefore weddings may not be the best considering most weddings take, you know, they happen on the weekends. And if that's our specialty, and we're missing Little Johnny's soccer game every single weekend because we're having to photograph weddings, well, that may not be the best business model for us. So maybe we might really love weddings, but we'll specialize in something else that we really love, like family portraits that can be done you know, on the weekdays or whatever. 
Or maybe photography is just a part-time thing. And the same thing might be true. Like we're working a nine to five, kind of Monday through Friday, but we do have our weekends open um, to a certain extent. And maybe we only want to take weddings maybe on Saturdays or maybe just ones on Sundays. And we could totally do that too and still make money. We're still growing and maybe we're eventually, you know, transitioning into becoming a full-time photographer. But there's kind of a balancing act between, you know, our nine to five, our photography that we're trying to launch and get off the ground and our family. And even though we might focus on a specific area of photography, I still feel it's important to get out and shoot other things that, that are maybe not as interesting to us. Um, maybe we're not good at them or we don't specialize in those certain things. But there's a lot of stuff we can learn from trying new things out or learning new skill sets. Weddings, for example, I'm sorry I keep going back to weddings, but that's what I know the best. So that's kind of what I'm going to compare things to. But we specialize in weddings, but they are really encompassing of a lot of different types of photography, like landscape photography to show establishing shots or as part of an environmental portrait. Obviously, there's often times where it's just like, say, portrait work. Then there's architectural type work of like buildings and things, product photography, like things with the details and even event work, you know, during receptions and, and so on. You know, there's a lot of different types of photography all within the wedding. So by taking some time to get better at, say, landscape work, for example, uh, you might learn new techniques that can incorporate into your weddings to make those landscape type environmental portraits or you know, those establishing shots even better. Or maybe we start learning like astrophotography. That's something that I'm kind of interested in. And we start incorporating that into the wedding day. So now we can create really cool astrophotography portraits because we spent time learning how to do just astrophotography. And these types of things are things that can help us stand out as wedding photographers. And even if photography will always kind of remain just a hobby or something you do just for fun, Trying new things out is also beneficial, you know? Plus, I think it keeps us learning and gives us a change from what we normally might do. And maybe even we find new areas of interest and new friends from learning that different type of stuff. Finding your niche or your niches, I don't think is always something that you just decide on either. I feel it's more of a combination of having an idea of what we probably like and also trying new things out. And then sometimes things just kind of find you. I mean, that's the really the way it was for weddings, you know, when I got into weddings. I had zero interest when I got into photography to photograph weddings. Nothing about weddings from the outside looking in seemed interesting to me. It just seemed very boring and something I didn't want to do at all. And I've never even been to a wedding when I fir- first, you know, shot my first wedding. So I didn't know what really happened. And I just thought it was, a, you know, the traditional wedding thing. And it just seemed really boring. But because I was a new photographer and I was still kind of shooting a little of everything I tried a wedding out you know and I ended up shooting my very first one and it was a non-traditional wedding it was a very offbeat type of wedding to where the wedding was actually a play in a theater of the actual wedding and I was like wow you know this is amazing I've, I've didn't even know a wedding like that could exist so that's kind of where I fell in love with weddings and it necessarily wasn't just the wedding part of it it was more the storytelling part of it And that's when I kind of discovered about myself was I love storytelling and that's what draws me the most to photography. And then once I figured out that, hey, not all weddings are normal traditional weddings, I tended to specialize in more offbeat, unique style weddings that would allow me to just kind of explore the day and really focus on the the storytelling part of it. So in a way, you know, weddings found me. I didn't find weddings because I thought I didn't want to do them at all, but turns out, hey, that's what I do now. And because I loved so much of the storytelling part of it, I started trying to figure out ways to apply that to other types of photography, Um, like the family photography. For many years, I didn't do any family portraits at all just because I didn't want to do the normal traditional family portraits. But once I figured out that I can apply kind of my documentary storytelling approach the way I do with weddings to families, it was a game changer. It, It opened up a whole new genre for me to photograph and also to be able to make money from. Overall, I think the more types of photography that we try, the more we'll find ourselves either saying, yes, this is amazing, or no, this freaking sucks. And either way, it's okay. We're learning something new about ourselves and about what we like and don't like about photography. Also, your niche in photography world will probably change over time. You know, maybe it'll grow, it will shrink, it kind of evolves, 
especially as we grow as people and our lives change and things like that. So we don't always have to specialize in one particular thing, you know, for our whole lives. Maybe we change careers into a different type of photography or whatever the case may be, you know, so that you don't have to be stuck in just one thing, especially when you're just starting out and you think that your passion is one thing, but as you grow over time, kind of like me, you might find it something else. I also don't feel that it's necessarily bad to always be a journalist, you know, especially if you really do love shooting kind of a little of everything. I do still feel that there's more advantages to actually niching down and specializing in a certain area, especially being able to, say, charge more money or to be seen as an expert in, in that field, in that special area. But if you haven't already found your photography niche, you know, don't stress about it. You will eventually find it or it will eventually find you or maybe a combination of both. And that's kind of part of the fun and the journey of photography. We're always learning something new. We're always changing. We're evolving and we're getting better at the craft. So I'm curious, you know, have you found your photography niche? And if so, like, what is it that you specialize in? And how did it find you or did you find it? And then maybe what other types of photography do you love to do besides what you specialize in? What do you hate about some other ones? Or what types of ponies do you like to ride? Whatever your thoughts are, I would love for you to come join me and others in the Facebook group. And that's at Photo Bar Podcast. Um, you could type that in to like the search field of Facebook. It's called Photo Bar Podcast Lounge. Join the conversation and leave your feedback and stuff there. And if you don't necessarily like to be social, um, you can also email me. Or if you like want to see me show ideas or anything else that you got, I would love to hear all that stuff. Just email me at the photo. No, it's not the. It's just Photo Bar Podcast at gmail.com. Um, don't put the the in there because it won't work. But um, yeah, I would love to hear any things that you guys have on topics you'd like covered or really just anything, any kind of feedback that you guys have. Of course, if you haven't already, subscribe to the podcast because I want to make sure that you guys never miss an episode and hitting the subscribe button is the best way to do that. And if you have any family and friends that might be interested in this podcast or you think it would be helpful for them, please share it with them because that would be totally awesome of you and it'd be nice for me. And lastly, if you could help us grow the community by leaving a five-star review on iTunes, Google Play, uh, Stitcher, or wherever you're listening to these free podcasts at, it really helps me stay motivated because I do this as a passion project, as something just for fun, and I don't make any money from it, so getting your feedback is the greatest thing that I can get. So thank you very much for anybody that's already left reviews, and speaking of of which, here are a few people that recently left reviews, and thank you so much. Uh, We have MDaily8888, RS Brown Photography. Heavy Week, Shin Ju Ku San, HBD Jebs, and S Nader 11. Sorry if I just totally fucked up anybody's name. I'm just trying to read them off here, but hopefully I got them right. But that wraps up this episode. So until next time, have fun, be safe, and we'll talk to you then. What other types of...